that song, uh, it, it is relevant to what I'm going to share. Um, I didn't know that you'd chosen this song. I was going to ask Rebecca to play it. So I was blessed to fall there. I'm going to begin. Lord, give us the courage to go through this year to fulfill all that is within our heart that you've placed there to fulfill your kingdom of God here on earth. Father, we know we have the boldness and the courage, but give us the strength to hold up these weary arms and legs to go forward with zeal and with fervence so that we are strengthened in unity rather than individually. In Jesus' mighty name. Today I'm going to talk about you can't be afraid and faithful. The two do not go together. I had to ask myself recently over and over again, am I a good and faithful servant? And I've got to say, I'm not. I'm not faithful because I doubt everything. Inside, I know I trust God. And I know things will change. And I know things will get better. And I feel like, surely, not one more thing. I can't take another one thing now. But I trust in God totally. I'm still wavered there, though. I know the words that I'm saying, and I know things will get better, but is this self-reassurance or a wavering cry? It's a wavering cry at the moment. I don't know. But I do know God is faithful, and I do know that I will always come short of the glory of God, and I do know that God loves me. But if I live in doubt, that's not faith. That's fear. I know I have God within me, And I've asked him to be my Lord and Saviour. And that power of God is burning inside each and every one of us. We know it is. We know it's there. We find it hard to tap into it, to be all that God wants us to be. We have to get through life and we have to get through things, good or bad. Yet our belief should be, I don't care what man does or says, just as long as I please God. I know I always talk from a woman's perspective and I'm sorry that's what you're going to get because I am a woman. But I know, and I'm sure men, you've got your own journeys in this. Some women or most women have so many things to consider as their responsibilities and there is no physical time to think about anything. This is exhaustive living and it's not good for anyone. So setting aside the fear of the setting as, so setting aside the fear that Lord I can't do this, give me solutions to ease these burdens. I shed them to you daily, but day and by day by day those burdens seem to be increasing. I don't understand. So you've got to do something before I lose myself. And I'm sure many of us are at the same stage. I mean even John the Baptist doubted He said to his disciples, go and ask, is he the Messiah, is he the one? And he knew, he was there, he was baptised, he saw him. Exodus, I'm going to go through quite a few scriptures. You can write them down and look later, but I'll I'll read them to you. Exodus 18, 17 to 23. Moses' father replied, what you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. I'm not the prophet and I'm not the senior pastor, but definitely, he definitely needs your help. I know things are changing and I know we are an awesome church because we're not where we were 12 months ago. What I would ask is that everyone seek God and ask how you can help senior pastor in the strength of something that you have a gift of so that you don't waste your talents and I and him can have the help. I'm not superwoman and I don't want to be superwoman. It's not my job. But I have to be strong for the pastor and I can't do everything myself. I don't want to do everything myself because I physically cannot do everything. Isaiah 54, the Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary He awakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The enemy uses our tiredness to stop us even seeking God first thing. 
So not only is your first thought not in God, it's the obligations and responsibilities you have, because the enemy is using that. So you think to yourself, I'm going to have a lie-in, but no, not only do you not have a lie-in, you don't even have a good night's sleep. So you're even more tired than the day before. It's just a vicious circle. So seeking God, even if it means sitting on the loo and saying, Lord, it doesn't matter where I am, just as long as I'm talking to you, this is where I'm going to find you, wherever I am. It doesn't matter to God, just as long as we communicate with him. Matthew 8.25, when the disciples were in the boat and they thought that they were going to perish, they shouted out, Lord, save us, we are going to drown. And in verse 26, Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. They had seen so many things that Jesus had done while they had been with him. So many things that nothing seemed fearless to them, but they were afraid of the waves and the weather. Our earthly pressures dictate our belief rather than the faith of knowing who God is and that he's got, his co- that he's got it covered. The disciples were excellent sailors. They'd been fishing, they'd been on that lake. It's not big, but it is a lake. They knew the danger. What they did not know that Jesus could, can, what they did not know was that Jesus can control the forces of nature. We often have the same storms in our life, where we feel God can't or won't work. We say that superficially, but we know deep down what we're saying is contrary yet again. But when we truly understand who God is, however, we will realise that He controls not only the storms of nature but the storms of our troubled heart. Jesus' power calmed the storm and he can also deal with the problems that we face. Jesus is only willing to help us if we ask him. He ain't going to do it if you're going to be silent. We should never discount his power even in those terrible trials. So that song was really more for me than for you really. There is power in his name. But it's like pushing yourself on regardless. You know that God can fix this. And we want the solution quicker than it actually transpires. When we have Jesus, we have the calm because our absolute reliance is on Jesus. However, as humans, we haven't been taught that. We have to be deprogrammed to learn what God wants us to learn. That our first thought, our first port of call is always God. Man is never ever going to fix it for us. We can say all of this, oh, I'll go to so and so and so and so. But they ain't going to offer the solution, not like God can. It'll be a temporary thing. And I know our storms are temporary, but that's not the point. We should have a buddy system, you or your spouses or your friends. But most importantly, if you don't have that, then you have God as your buddy. And I'm not saying, you know, your mate, your friend or whatever. He should be all of those things. But more importantly, he's the one that's going to give you the strength, the courage, the word, everything that's going to give you the tools to do the job. And even though you're in the middle of it and you want to say, look, I I totally am giving up now because I can't take it anymore. Pastor hasn't been well since Christmas Day evening. And I, before, and he had been doing it recently. He'd been getting up and sharing a word with me because I asked him to, because I know that his growth is my growth, which I've said to you all before. But not only is it my growth, it's our growth because he's the head of the church. Well, he's had high blood pressure and the top reading has been about 224 onwards and that was the reading that I had when I took him into hospital. But I did not want to contact you because you were having your celebrations. I will not be the person to spoil what's happening in your lives. So my reliance is in God. Yes, I should reach to you. That's not the point. The point is, you're not my answers, are you? You can pray, but why should I spoil your celebrations because of what I'm going through? And I'll explain more. My earthly response 
like the last time, would have been to get him checked out. But I know what my husband believes in. And I will not interfere with that, even though I have to close my mouth so many times. So the only person that is going to help me is God. And apparently, I've recently found out, which was my answer, is that people with heart problems cannot and should not go out in cold weather. And before Christmas, he decided he can't go out, so he's going to sit in the garden. A freezing day, and he's sat in the garden. So that was why he has high blood pressure. Because the valves close, because there's not enough oxygen in your body, and you have to keep warm. That's the only way you're going to bring it down. But we didn't know that. But had I taken him to the hospital over Christmas and the New Year, apparently in the Alex and Worcester, all the patients were being transferred to Worcester. There were about 67 on trolleys. Six of them died while they were on their trolleys. And they were really severely critical. So that was not my answer. So even though I know what I should have done and I didn't do, I'm glad I didn't for those reasons. I mean, Worcester isn't just round the corner, you take anybody, but nobody would have seen him anyway. So I know I do worry about him, and I know, don't shoot me down, worry's not of God and I shouldn't be doing this. And I've said why I wouldn't tell you all, because... You know, you're all having a good time. Why should you have a bad time because of what is happening? Like those disciples in that severe weather, they know they're going through those troubled that troubled storm, and they knew that the waves. It's only a small lake. I don't know about seven miles or something. And apparently, but when the weather hits, the waves can go up to about six feet. So they knew that they were in some danger. We all at that point, sometimes we know that what we're going through, we're overloaded and are going to be consumed by this huge wave that's right in front of us. But our first point of call is always going to be Jesus, hasn't it? Because nothing else or no one else is going to give us those answers. And to be fair, and I'm going to be totally honest with you, when you're going through it, being told a scripture is not going to help you through it. You know that inside you, you want somebody to hold you and say, come on, you can do this. So I know I began by saying God is within us. We have the power to stand. And we should be standing and looking at those waves that are about to engulf us and and rebuke it like Jesus did. But in our storm, we are so silent that we do nothing because we can't, don't know what to think or what to do. And when I get to that stage, I have a cry. And Anita offers me her shoulder to cry on. And I let it all out, shake myself off, and we carry on. But it does get a lot weary. At that point, I am no longer wasting my time trying to be bold and courageous and being faithful by having the power of Jesus within us. But the situation only changes when I embrace him again, despite the tiredness, despite the mental overload. When we come to the end of ourselves, and I know we all say this, it's all words sometimes, but until you actually do it, when you come to the end of yourselves, that is when God will move. Because we know deep in our heart that God, his word which is God-breathed, is alive. If he's alive within us, then what we're reading on a daily basis, even if it's a tiny little scripture, is going to ignite that light within us. I want to say, look, I've really had enough, but that's not the point. I can't do that. God hasn't brought me this far to drown, and I will not take that. My feelings and my situation may still be the same right this moment today. And I know I've talked about my mental anguish before before I became a Christian. But before Christmas, I've got to tell you, I was right on that pinnacle. And the only person, the only thing that's helped me through it 
is an eater. Because we love Adrian as well, and we love God as well, we can encourage each other to say, come on, we can do this. We can get through this. We aren't alone. We can do this another day. But it reaches a point, well, how many times are you saying that to yourself? God says, forgive. How many times? 77 continuously. Well, you've got to forgive yourself so many times to stop thinking earthly and say, look, I've got to carry on regardless. This, I can't, I've got no choice. I have to make this work. It's not me who's going to make it work. God, you've got to make it work. So I thank God for her totally. I do thank God for all of you, but when you're in that situation, there's only me and Anita, we have to deal with that situation. Revelation 2, 2 to 3. I know all things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know that you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered that they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. And I know all of us are in the same situation. I don't want to quit. I have to persevere and I have to get pastor on his feet for the sake of the sheep, for the sake of you, for those worldwide that he ministers to because he's a doer of the word. I openly married and I totally know it's absolute, absolute that I married my husband as, because he's a man of God and because everything we are going to do is going to be great and amazing. Just because there's a little blip. But I have to say this. There's a lot of blips. Sometimes those blips get you a plate where you think, you know, how many times can I say this? We can get through this. We can get through this. But we have to keep saying it. God has to prove himself in this situation to me that he is the glue that's keeping the whole of this together. Because I... Cannot do it. Isaiah 35, 4. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear. God will come. He will come with vengeance. With divine retribution. He will save you. Isaiah 43, 1. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, who, he who formed you, Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. So us being together, you being here, is not a coincidence. God's already prepared you to be here for this moment in time. He's already told us what we've got to do. But we're so scared and so weighted down by the rubbish of the world and situations that we're in, it's really heavy burden that we've got to just toss off because we've got to find ourselves again. Psalm 34, 4 I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So despite us thinking we've done something wrong, something's caused the pastor's blood pressure to go up or this and the other, instead of beating ourselves up, found out actually it was nothing to do. It was the weather, something that we can't control. But what we can control is, I'm sorry, but you're not going to go out. You have to sit here and the greeting's going to be on. However hot you feel, you have to be warm. So my answer came a lot later. But what if I hadn't done what I've done and just waited upon God? What would have happened if I had taken him to the hospital? Psalm 94, 19. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. I can't say there's immense joy. The joy that I know I've got within me, I know I've got God within me, but it's not outwardly apparent to everyone that I'm joyful because I have not a lot to be joyful about because it's too difficult. It doesn't mean I'm not happy. It doesn't mean I'm not... It's not about feelings, is it? It's about God, isn't it? So even before, as I said, I asked Pastor to share with me and then with his blood pressure, that hasn't happened. So what I'm saying to you is, even those that you rely on to help you grow yourself, ain't going to happen. 
You have to do it for yourself. They're there. And yes, it'd be lovely if they did it daily, but if they can't, then you have to dig in. It's your journey. You're the one that's going to go forward. So I wasn't being funny. You know, we are under authority and we have to make sure that our husbands and spouses and whatever are growing as well, but they're not our responsibility. God's got to sort them out. I can't sort out my husband out. He has to work on it himself. I can't fix it. I'm not expected to fix it. But that's what the enemy says. You're the wife. You've got to, you've got to work it out. Yeah, you've got to do this and you've got to do that and you've got to do this. Well, I'll do that for the moment. But I've said to him, when he gets better, he better be running around for me. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am convinced neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Despite what is happening, we will still have the love of God that nobody can take away. We're never going to find the love that you want, that's a hole in your heart, until we get it from God. Because man will never be able to fill it for us. Even though you expect everybody else to be strong, there'll be days when they're not. Which is human, isn't it? But if you want that absolute, God is only going to be the answer. Man can never be the answer. They'll be your encouragement. They'll be your team. They'll be part of you. But what you have to do is personal to you and you have to overcome it. Nobody's going to do it for you. Psalm 27.1 The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is our stronghold, not our circumstances. The hurt words of situations, I have to keep saying to myself, is temporary. This is not going to go on. Even though it feels like it's been an eternity, it will stop. It's temporary. I'm not moaning about the situation. What I'm trying to do is explain to you what it means to keep going on regardless. And it's going to be tough for everyone, but the only way you're going to do it is if you share it so that that can equip the other person to be going through what they're going through. What we know, if God is our stronghold, is that whatever we have learned about God, whatever we have heard about God, and whatever we already know within our knower, situations in our life that it was only God that did that, that is absolute. Everything else isn't. It's Everything else will change, but God's word won't. So rather than thinking about me, myself and I and this situation, I have to focus myself and say, is this a deterrent from the enemy? I know it's a situation, I know it's there and I've got to do what I've got to do, but is this a deterrent to take me off from what I'm already trying to do is grow myself in God. God will use everybody. So it's not focusing on the people that are causing the situation. It's focusing on, okay, the situation is this. I still have to find time to grow and learn because that is the only thing that's going to give me strength. That's the only thing that's going to bubble up outside of me rather than useless words that won't give life to any situation. So you either give it life through God's word or you use earthly words and say, oh, you know, this is really rubbish. I can't do it. I can't. Well, you know what? I've heard a lot of I can't, I can't, and I don't want to say them. I'm sick of hearing them. I can't. If you take the T off the can't, it looks like a cross. So take the T off and say you can. So humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you in 1 Peter 5, 6-7. So resume the mind of Christ to know Psalm 118, 6 The Lord is within me, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? 
what can the situation do to me? It's not particularly about a person. It's what the situation can do to me. And he says the same in Psalm 56, 3 and 4. And he says the same in Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. What can mortals do to me? What can the situation do to me? You're not in the storm for long. It does seem like an eternity. But keep focused on God because that's the only way you're going to get it. 2 Timothy 1.7 God has not given me a spirit of fear but of love, courage and a sound mind. 1 Chronicles 28.2 So I have been really digging in to overcome this. David also said to Solomon his son be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid and discouraged and we know that We know that Joshua was told this many times and it comes quite a lot through the Bible. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged for the Lord God is your God and he is with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple, service of the Lord, is finished. So, for all of us, you cannot be discouraged even though you may be the encourager who's recently got discouraged You cannot be discouraged, you cannot be afraid because he himself always goes before you. But you're going to let it start coming out. It has to keep coming out your mouth to make it alive. But if you're saying it in your head, there's nothing materialising, nothing will change. And this is for all of us. Our commission is, your work is not finished until you spread the gospel. So unlike Solomon, we have the Holy Spirit that resides within us and we have access to God all the time, even in our period of angst, even in that darkest hour when you think this is it. Matthew 10:28. Do not be afraid of those who ki- do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both your soul and your body in hell. That really shook me, that did. All I can say is don't give up your crown just because of what's happening in your daily life. These things are testing our endurance to finish the race. It's testing our endurance. Even though you don't like it, you don't want it, and you want to run away, it will still be there, the situation. So, until you keep letting God's word come out of your mouth and declaring it, rather than sitting still, not saying anything, going in silla and just not even talking to anybody because that's exactly how you feel and what you want to do, you have to let God's word and him within you rise up and say, you know what, this isn't my life, I ain't having it. I have to make... I have to use God's work to make it change. Only he can change a situation. So you declaring the word of God, that word of God will cut like a two-edged sword the darkness that's engulfing us. So the situation, the circumstance, the, the real squishy stuff that we are all going through cannot be changed until we use the sword of the Spirit, the word of God, to break through it. Nobody else can change that for yourself. But you've got to stop saying, I can't. It's right, you can't. God can. But you can't. You've got to stop saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. Look, I've had enough now. Stop. So be alive as God is alive within you. Don't give up. Forget playing about. And be a child of God. Giving up for each and every one is not an option. You, you and me are stronger than that. Romans 8.15 The spirit you received does not make you slaves to your situation so that you can live in fear again of the situation. All this looks like something I've been through before. Well, you're not in that mountain and you're not going to go through it again. Rather, the spirit you received brought you about... You're brought about your adoption to sonship and daughter and, and by him we cry Abba Father. So in your deepest, darkest moment, cry Abba Father. Not, 
can you help me? Can you help me? Well, the thing is, a lot of people can't help you. Only God can help you. Temporarily, people can help you. And it'd be lovely. We should all be praying for one another anyway, daily, without having to ask. So we don't have to have these emergency prayers. Let's not do emergency prayers. Let's do covering prayers the blood of Jesus over each and every one daily, so none of us are going through it every day. But we've got to make us, we've got to change what's happening in 2017. I'm not having 2016 again. I don't even want to have anything that even looks like 2016. It was a year from definitely hell. So I'm going to bring God into this situation, and I'm hoping all of you will as well. So in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous and be strong. So all of you, be courageous and be strong. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to... Sorry, 1 Peter 3, 13 to 14. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to go, do good? But even if you suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. So whatever your situation is saying to you, you know, you're never going to get this, or you're never going to do this, you're never going to be in good health, you're never going to... Well, even if you suffer for a while, God's got it sorted. But if you keep confessing it, then it's never going to get sorted. So you're bringing into being all the rubbish that's happening because you keep saying it rather than God is going to cut this situation. I've had enough now. But you all have to be at that point where you've had enough. 1 John 4.18 There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. It feels like punishment when we're fearing, doesn't it? The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So, our gauge there is, if you're living in fear, you're not made perfect in God's love, because you're not under his covering, because you don't trust. You're not made perfect in love ever if you're always going to fear. I'll say that again, what the scripture says. And it's in 1 John 4.18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has not has to do with punishment. If you've not got God in your camp, you've got the enemy in your camp, and if you're accepting that punishment, then who's giving it, dishing it out? It ain't God. So if you want to be under the covering of love, you can't be in doubt and be faithful. You're either in God's camp or you're in the enemy's camp. You either accept what's happening or you be in God's camp and say, look, I'm changing this situation because you're changing it for me, Lord. You can't have perfect love and be afraid. And I want to be what it says. No, let me, sorry. So when in Proverbs two eight he says he says he guards the path of the just and protects those who are faithful. The cost of following Jesus sacrifice with no earthly rewards or security. So just because you believe in God, you isn't going to be an easy ride. And we all know that. It hasn't been an easy ride. But he has built our stamina up and our endurance. Even though at the time we think, you know, this can't be you, Lord. It isn't. It's a testing of our, or whether we're faithful enough to declare what he is to us. So Matthew 9.18, the leader of the synagogue came and knelt before him. His daughter had just died. And he said, but you can bring her back to life if you just come and lay hands on her. So even when the situation looks dead, Jesus can raise it from the dead. So even though your worst situation that you think, you know, I've really come to the end of this. Should I actually carry on or is this it or do I cut it off? Well, God's going to give you the answer. If he thinks it's dead, he won't really raise it up. But because he's still in the situation, you wait for when he's resurrected and see how the power of Jesus follows through in that and what the world will see as a miracle. 
So God meets us where our faith is, like that centurion said, my servant is ill. I don't need you to come, Jesus, just say it. We have Jesus within us. Do we need, do we say, I want you right here close to me, Jesus, to see you, then I'll believe you. Or are you going to believe the good that is done in your life since you've become a child of Christ? Or are you focusing on all the bad things that have been happening? The bad things aren't of God. It's where your focus has shifted. My focus gets shifted so these trials come my way because I don't have the ability or the strength to be able to fight them because I'm trying to do it all in my own strength, in my frustration, in my tiredness. But every time I keep focusing back, then I can be built up again and then restored in that situation that I can go another day. Even though that day may be the most hardest, you can say, look, tomorrow's another day. Leave yesterday behind. I'm saying yesterday was not a very good day, but today's going to be a better day. But you're not saying it out of your, just your words. You're saying it's with the word of God. That cuts like a two-edged sword. The enemy is going to use your mind over and over again to stop you saying God is good. And God is good all the time. So in Psalm 9.10, those who know your name trust in you, for you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Jeremiah 29.13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me. I want to be, above all things, in front of Jesus and he says, come in, you good and faithful servant. You can't be a good and faithful servant if you're doubting and not being faithful, you can't do both. So it's so hard to get yourself out of that fear factor and the situation factor. And I'm a very touchy-feely person, so emotions can get overloaded in me quite a lot. But I didn't realise how... I've, and God's got to change this. And I'll share it with you. We had a team building thing on Friday and everyone loves team building things just as much as I do, I'm sure. Um, sitting in a group and they asked, they asked, what do, you know, they're talking about customer service. Yeah, yeah, that's another story. So how do, how do people perceive you? So they were going around the table and somebody said, rather than me actually say anything, somebody said to me, says, you look like you're going to knock people out. Oh, I probably feel that way and I know my face is expressive and I know I haven't had a lot of things to be happy about, a lot of things to smile about, but I can't change it. I'm always professional, I'm always courteous, I'm doing my job. I'm not there to make people happy, I'm there to do my job. But I didn't want to lose my personality. I thought if that's what you see, that's your perception... That's not my perception of myself because I know who I am. I may not be the person that I am, I want to be at the moment because of situation and that's temporary, but you don't dictate where I am. So just be careful when people are talking to you and take you off track of your identity. So be faithful with knowing who you are because the moment you stop believing in yourself is a moment that you stopped believing God's word about you. So keep reminding yourself you're a child of God. Keep reminding yourself I'm strong and courageous. Keep reminding yourself that you have God's love within you because he's within you. And you know what? I don't like the situation. You know, it's only a situation. It's going to pass. Yeah, you can have your paddy over there. I can't deal with you, but you do it. And I'll just sit here and contently do what I'm doing. So don't get sucked into situations. Just because it's somebody else's situation, don't gel yourself with it. Keep separate to it because they've got to go through that journey themselves. So the strength is you being faithful to God and keeping your focus. Be that good and faithful servant and get your crown that's do you, don't give it away.
So that's all I've got to say. Lord, I thank you for this word. And I know I'm not there yet. And none of us are. And we never will get there because that's our journey. But give us strength to dig deeper into your word so we know that situation we're going through is just temporary. But your word, Lord, is absolute. And that doesn't waver to the left or the right. So fill us with that daily. Even if it's one scripture that's alive to us, give it to us daily, Lord, because we seek you daily. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over at Living Water United Fellowship that, Father, each and all of us grow this year above and beyond their, our expectations. Father, show us the vision for where we are going and what we will do and that we will, we will actually accelerate into your will for this, this year. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.